Revenge of the Neckband. All right, about four years ago, I made a cheeky video comparing true wireless earbuds to neckband earbuds. Obviously, the exciting trend in Bluetooth audio is true wireless, but I genuinely prefer the old school neckband for pocket convenience. Kind of like it when I don't have to carry an extra lump in my pocket just to hold my earbuds. You know what? You can watch that other video. I'm not going to spell all of that out here. Just pause this, watch that, come on back. Welcome back. Suffice it to say from four years ago to now, there haven't been as many exciting neckband earbud announcements. So I think it's a little special when a bigger brand in audio comes out with a solid option to consider. Bear Dynamics sent over the Bluebird ANC. This is a new generation of their Bluebird neckband earbud with ANC. Send it my way for me to take on a test drive and share my thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts, primarily, I love them, except for one small usability quirk. Okay, first up for a neckband earbud. The design is a dangling cable. The cables don't retract. It's got a soft, flexible neck housing, and it's a pretty loose fit, but they stay put decently well up to moderate activity like walking or hiking. The cables are a good length when they're dangling down. They kind of line right up with the end of my sternum, and that also gives you a little flexibility for fit. Now, the cable shielding is stiff enough that they tend to bend out instead of sort of rubbing up against your face. Unlike True Wireless, where you don't have to worry about handling or rubbing cable noises, there is a bit of that. If the cables bend in and start kind of rubbing up against your face, you're gonna hear some of that sort of translating up the, uh, the earbud cable, but they're decently resistant to that kind of movement sound. There's a durable, sporty build to the design, but with any neckband, you're weighing the design against the activity you're gonna use them with. Anything where dangling cables might be an issue, Probably not a good idea to use these. Audio tech inside, we've got a single driver design with a great collection of ear tips included in the box. But unlike Bear Dynamics Freebird True Wireless, there were no phone tips included, so I added my own foam tips. Really simple controls on the neckband. There's a toggle for your ANC settings, and this also powers the neckband on and off. Then on the right ear cable, we have play pause and volume controls. Interestingly, the USB-C port is open for how you charge and connect the headset, but Bear Dynamics still rates this neckband for IPX4 sweat resistance. They've done a little bit of water resistance to this open port, and I think that's a nice change of pace from some of the older neckbands that would have fragile port covers to try and block moisture from getting into the band. The battery is rated for up to 14 hours on a single charge with fast charging tech on tap. That estimate seems pretty accurate for my use. These were multi-day earbuds before I got a low battery warning. Now, true wireless earbuds can often boast 20 or 30 hours of battery life, but that really means you've got to put them back in the case to top them off. Barodynamic has one of the longer lived true wireless options. These are the Freebird. They can hang for around 10 hours on a single charge before you got to put them back in the case. But if we move over to a neckband and keeping a neckband lightweight, we can push that single charge playtime even longer. But say you're concerned about running these for an entire day of listening and then not having them charged up later, Bear Dynamic has a great trick on this headset. Something we cannot do with true wireless earbuds. The Bluebird can be used while charging and they can become a USB audio source. This is kind of huge. Legitimately, with a USB cable, you never need to worry about downtime. And even though these support Bluetooth multi-point pairing, you can also connect directly to a computer over USB as an additional source. So you can pair with a phone and a tablet for your Bluetooth and then connect directly to a laptop or a Steam Deck if you wanna go wired. I'm so happy to see this as a feature. It helps expand the use of a single audio product, and it also means there should be fewer of those moments where, you know, you reach for your earbuds and they aren't charged or ready for you to take them out on your day. All Bluetooth cans should add this as a feature. So again, we've got this extra space in the neckband, and I think it's being put to really good use. The wireless connection is Bluetooth 5.2 with support for AAC and Aptex Adaptive Codex. So all the tech stuff is on point, but that's the transition for us here. The main point of any video on audio gear, these are earbuds, sporty or otherwise, 
So how do they sound? I think they've got a nice little bit of rumble to them. Listening through my test playlist on Kobas, I feel there are some fun lifts in the lows with a bit of sparkle in the upper air. It's a consumer pleasing tuning, which I mean, it leans a little into a smiley face style EQ. I don't always enjoy that, but I think there's room here. My concerns with smiley face or deep V tuning is how the mids, uh, sometimes the mids and the character of vocalists can sometimes get lost in the extra color that's being applied. So here we've got some thump, and there's definitely some sparkle, but detail and articulation on guitars and drum hits aren't completely stepped on. Really driving some low end, these are running up near sound core for you bass heads out there, but still giving me some of that middle buzz and articulation that I personally like. I can almost always use a bit more in the mids. My concern with the out of the box tuning is that the high end sparkle I have a few torture test tracks like uh, WTF by OK Go, where bright earbuds are going to sound shrill. And the Bluebird landed a few moments that started to feel piercing. But then on hip hop and electronica, there's just such a fun bounce to that rumble. I mean, it's almost elastic. So I feel this kind of fits with a sporty, on the go wireless bud. I'd wanna block the sound of distractions in my environment or gym equipment around me, and I'm gonna be bumping tracks that get the heart rate up with just enough color and shape where more casual listening, uh, classical or singer songwriter, I mean, those are still gonna fare well. I just think they're a bit more fun on the aggressive stuff and, and especially on things like video games and action films. The ANC is solid. I still think Bear Dynamic is a little on the conservative side for their noise reduction. These are not subtle. They reduce a fair amount of environment around you. And there's also very little hiss or air that's added when you kick on on the ANC, and this for me, that's one of those areas where I think the price on ANC headphones still matters. It's still more expensive to make a product that won't change the tuning or the characteristics of the audio you listen to while they're trying to block out noise. And not adding that hiss or changing the character of the audio, that's kind of a big deal still. Cheap ANC can still impact the quality of your music. So for these audio brands, they might not deliver the absolute most isolating ANC, but I think that overall, the quality to ANC performance is very well balanced. I do wish there was just a little bit more attention paid to the audio pass-through mode, which feels like a recording of the environment around you. It's not quite as natural as some of the more expensive true wireless earbuds that we played with in this space. It's acceptable performance for a quick scan of your environment around you, but it's not something that I think competes well against a, a more purpose-built solution like a bone conduction headset. Now, my biggest gripe with the Bluebird has to do with these ANC microphones though, specifically where the microphones are on the driver casing. This is impacted a little bit by the fact that I am using these with foam uh, ear tips, but if you put them in your ears while they're powered on and with the ANC mics active, it's very easy to squish and block the mics and create just a moment of feedback as you twist them into your ear. That momentary pinch of a whine, like a what? I've been using them for a bit now, and I can still occasionally surprise myself with a tiny little acoustic pulse. Depending on the fit and the size of the ear tips you use these with, your mileage will vary. And just a quick microphone test. This is not a call quality test. I'm recording this directly to my Pixel Fold here. Just a quick sample on a light, breezy day. It's not hard wind. These, uh, you know, the noise canceling shouldn't be having to work too difficult just to kind of cancel out breeze. But we can get a sense of what this is going to sound like just in a nice open area environment. And I think that's probably enough of me rambling here. And this is where we should start wrapping this all up. I really like the Bear Dynamic Freebird as a true wireless option, and the Bluebird follow right in those same footsteps. There's a practicality to a neckband, literally, in how you wear it. Just let them drop. But that doesn't mean we don't see some fun features at play here. You know, play while charging and being used as a USB audio device are unique features for earbuds these days. We can't even count on full-sized cans or gaming headsets to offer this kind of tech. Otherwise, for one small handling gremlin, I really like what these are doing. It's refreshing getting a new premium neckband 
and the performance here competes very well with earbuds that are a step more expensive. So I will, of course, leave some links down below where you can find more information on the Bear Dynamic Bluebird, where you might be able to shop these puppies online. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been amazing. Those of you checking out my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or if you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy basically everywhere, but I'm posting a bit more these days on the Mastodons and sharing some photos on the Flickers, a little less so on the Instagrams and the Facebooks and the Twitters, but I will catch you all on the next review.